Hello and welcome to the October edition of The Journal. I'm Ron Carpenito and we're excited to have our own Morgan Healy back with us in the studio this month. Morgan, how are you? I'm doing great, Ron. It's so awesome to be back and I was away on assignment working on my reporting skills, covering some stories, so it's yeah. awesome to be here. How has your summer been? It's fantastic. Uh, we actually spent some time, a uh, family vacation down at Universal Studios. I have an avid Harry Potter fan in the, in the family, and we really enjoyed all the rides down there. I had a great time. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it really was a great season. I actually got to cover um, a red carpet event this past Sunday and met a lot of wonderful people in the television and film industry. It was kind of like a little indie vibe. Cool. Um, really, really wonderful up in Dover, Vermont. Mm. So. I'm really excited to get there next year. It's called ITV Web Fest, so Great. that was a treat for me. I think that was the highlight of my season. But Sounds like fun. We're, we're glad to have you back here in the studio with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, guys, October is here and in full swing in North Andover, and Halloween will be shortly upon us. We'll be telling you all about the fun events happening in our town here on North Andover Cam a bit later on. And first, let's get a quick glance at some scary entertainment updates with our resident critics, Jen and Tara. Hello, North Andover. Welcome back to our Watson Entertainment segment with my showstopper friend, Tara. And my dazzling friend, Jen. Well, I'm sure that you're all wondering why we're all dressed up for our October show. And the answer is quite simple. It's Halloween. But most of all, it's theater season. So let's roll out the red carpet for our upcoming shows here in the Merrimack Valley. First off, we have Spotlight Playhouse's Arsenic and Old Lace Ooh. being performed at Haverhill City Hall on October 3rd and 4th, and then again on October 10th, 11th, and 12th. Have you seen this show, Jen? Actually, darling, I haven't, but I absolutely must see it. Oh, Jen, you won't be disappointed. I saw this show a couple years ago, and you were in for a comedic treat. I can't wait. For more information, refer to the website at www.spotlightplayhouse.org. Next up, we have a couple of featured performances at the Rogers Center. On October 5th, we have the New England Tenors return for their annual concert. Jen, I hear that this will be a real crowd pleaser. It certainly will be, Tara, dear. I also heard that on October 23rd, 24th, and 25th, the Department of Visual and Performing Arts at Merrimack College presents The Shape of Things, huh. a play that will make you think about our modern day images, ideas of image, identity, loyalty, love, and art. art. For more info on these productions, refer to their website at www.merrimack.edu. Now instead, if you're interested in catching a performance in the ambiance of the roaring colors Ooh. of the autumn leaves, Acting Out has a treat. And not a trick. For you. Acting Out Junior Performance will be showcasing three mini variations of Oz at the Tops Field Fair. Ladies and gentlemen, these local junior actors will be featured in a variety of performances from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, there's no place like home. To the Wiz. Ease, ease on down, down, ease on down the road. And on to Wicked, featuring the hit song, Popular. Popular. And you know we all want to be Jen. But of course, Tara. Look for these jaw-dropping stage productions on Saturday morning, October 12th, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. The performance will be at Coolidge Hall. Oh. Special hint. Save time and money by pre-purchasing your admission tickets through www.topsfieldfair.org. I'll do just that. And Jen Darling, did you know that Acting Out also has some performances at the Daily Theater? They do? Tell me more. Well, from October 23rd to the 25th, there will be a show performed by two men and two women. The first act is called Walter Cronkite is Dead, and the second act is called Tuesdays with Maury. Something special about this production, Jen, is that partial proceeds go towards the support of the ALS research. How marvelous! So, those of you who didn't take on the Ice Bucket Challenge can still show your support for ALS research by buying a ticket to the show. Absolutely. Shall we show them, Jen? Absolutely. Oh, 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 oh the drama. Well, get ready for it, Tara, because next, 
Sweeney Todd is coming to town. <gasps> Get out of town! It's true. The demon Baba of Fleet Street is making his way into town as one of Acting Out's highlighted performances this fall. Just in time for Halloween, Tara. Oh, oh, I should schedule my next hair appointment. No, Tara! Don't. Why? Unless you plan on becoming a meat pie, of course. Oh, I mean, no. we need it for the next segment, dearie. It's true. Just so you know, there are eight performances of this spectacular musical production. I say more like eight opportunities. <laughs> October 31st, November 1st and 2nd, and again, November 7th, 8th and 9th. For tickets and more info on these not-to-be-missed shows, be sure to check out Acting Out website at www.actingouttheater.com. Oh, how horrifically exciting. Oh, Jen, if Sweeney Todd doesn't creep you out enough, you must see Act Theater Company's production of Young Frankenstein Come to Life. You mean like that guy I look like before coffee in the morning? Yes, Jen, that's the one. This was a hit Broadway musical, and I must tell you that we are both just dying, dying to see it. <laughs> oh, performances for the show are on October 24th, 25th, and 26th, and again on the 31st and November 1st. For more fabulous details on this show, please visit their website at www.acttheatercompany.com. Well, Tara, this whole month is a theater lover's red carpet extravaganza. Oh, and I, for one, am jazzed about it. Me too! <laughs> now, with all this theater excitement, don't forget to celebrate this fall with a traditional fanfare of apple picking, Ooh. pumpkin carving, hay rides, cider, and last, but certainly not least, all the other festivities that fall with Halloween on Friday, October 31st. Oh, I love it. Well, Jen, it looks like that we're all out of time for our October segment on the journal this month. Well, we've got places to be and people to see. But we hope that you will join us next month so you don't miss out on any great local shows coming up here in the Merrimack Valley. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until then, have a safe and happy Halloween, North Andover. <laughs> Cheers to you, North Andover. Cheers. Thanks for the update, ladies. We just want to make one correction. The correct date for the Oz performances at Topsville Fair is October 4th from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m., not October 12th, as previously mentioned. Also in the entertainment scene, poetry came to North Andover last month when Gail C. Henney hosted about 14 poets from all over Essex County right here in our CAM studio for a cozy reading. The diverse group of performers ranged in age from 10 years old all the way through senior citizens and featured poems using many different styles and covering a variety of topics. To watch the event and hear all of the performers, please make sure to tune into CAM Access and check the listings to see when you can enjoy the show. Now we check in with Lester and his event calendar updates over at the Senior Center. It's time for Senior Moments. Hi folks, I just wanted to touch base with you on a few tangent uh, experiences that we're having with our forthcoming uh, program in the latter part of October and uh, the good things to look forward to. I want to say that our fresh table, um, which is on Wednesday, with a food program, has been well received and uh, we look forward to further um, moments that everyone will come away with a smile. Um, one of the things that we find that um, in food preparation more and more senior centers are beginning to be concerned about fresh food, uh, fresh vegetables, and a different direction to the menu. Um, on another note, I want to mention transportation price slightly increased and uh, you might want to inquire about this um, because it affects us all. It's not a lot, but it is an increase. Now, moving on, I uh, want to touch base with you uh, as to uh, lectures that are forthcoming. Uh, in the month of uh, October, uh, we're going to have Bob Como, and uh, of course, Columbus Day, we're going to be closed. Uh, Joyce Bradshaw will uh, join us as town clerk in the upcoming election. 
And uh, don't forget, at the first part of November, we're going to have Ms. Uh, Woodsworth, uh, Newburyport historian. Uh, monthly uh, day trip to Foxwood uh, will be at the uh, second Tuesday of every month. Uh, we do need to have at least 28 persons to make this successful. Uh, moving on from there, the Mystery Ride and Luncheon. Uh, Mystery Ride has uh, been a successful one, and we have some more that are planned in October and November. The uh, thing that we want to look forward to is the, uh, the Supper Club. Uh, the Supper Club uh, meets um, on Thursdays. And uh, we have a, um, a turkey dinner that uh, uh, may uh, be around November the 19th. I guess that must be Turkey Day. At any rate, uh, some of the other things that are going on here, um, the uh, senior bowling uh, is at the Academy Lanes. And I know that um, we would like to see uh, additional people uh, signing up for this. Uh, they have, do have a fun time, and it's an enjoyable experience there. Um, men's breakfast. Men's breakfast, of course, is uh, held the, uh, on the first uh, Tuesday of the month, and it'll be held on October the 2nd. And uh, uh, we have a guest speaker as, as well. Um, the uh, Gala of Trees will be uh, forthcoming in November and uh, view the trees, select a tree, um, and take a chance. Um, the drawing uh, uh, prizes will be at a later date and will be announced there. And on a last note, of course, um, the hours have changed for Mr. Fix-It. Those guys do a fantastic job. They can fix anything. Uh, they're moving to Thursdays from 12 until 3. And on that note, let's go on to our next programming. Lisa Ritchie has been busy, involved in a fitness adventure. Last month, she participated in an event called Reach the Beach and provided us with pictures and this update about the event. Lisa reports that the weekend of September 12th, approximately 40 North Andover residents participated in this long-distance relay race that started on Cannon Mountain. And it ended about 208 miles later at Hampton Beach, all taking place in the beautiful state of New Hampshire. There were about 6,000 runners in total, and North Andover re represented four different teams. Team members traveled in a van while one person at a time ran three separate legs of the race anywhere from four to 10 miles each. One of the biggest challenges, besides logging the miles, was doing so on very little sleep and during all hours of the night. Everything except the running, including eating, changing, and short naps, took place inside the van. This makes for a very unique yet exciting event our running community looks forward to every year. Some members have been a part of Reach the Beach for 10 years straight. Each team completed the Reach the Beach Challenge successfully and in under 32 hours, arriving back home in North Andover completely exhausted, hungry, and in desperate need of a shower. Thanks so much for this update, Lisa. It's an impressive accomplishment, and we're so proud of everyone here from North Andover who ran in the race. North Andover seems to excel at impressing. On September 27th, the North Andover Board of Selectmen and State Reps for Essex County helped to dedicate the Freedom House, a new housing option for veterans and their families in financial need. Okay, well good afternoon everybody and, and thank you all for coming today on this beautiful day for this, uh, this great dedication for this new veterans housing. I'd like to uh, first invite Corinne Roten up and to lead us in the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. We're grateful this day for Freedom House. Receive our thanks for all the labor of love that has gone into making this a reality. 
receive our thanks for the long hours of planning and work, as well as the support and generosity that have made this day possible. I'd like to now invite Army veteran Todd Quinn and his family up to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, I'd like to express how proud we are in the town of North Andover that we can again offer veterans homes. Um, it, I think it's been since the 1950s since we've actually been able to dedicate and offer homes just for, for veterans of our armed services. So I'm very proud that today we are able to do this. As the Veterans Administration addresses the national homeless veterans concerns and our Governor and the Secretary of Veterans Services of the Commonwealth aggressively develop plans to reduce the statewide homeless veteran population. The town of North Andover did not stand by and wait. We knew something had to be done. And we was a handful of patriots celebrating Veterans Day at the local VFW Post 2104. On, be on behalf of the Board of Directors and staff of the Veterans Northeast Outreach Center, I'd like this time to take this time to express our thanks to the citizens of North Andover who at town meeting Overwhelming, overwhelmingly approved this project. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be great, great for them, uh, our North Andover veterans, to move into this North Andover housing and, and enjoy this great North Andover neighborhood. Ted agreed with us uh, that we should deliver this today so that there can be a Flag Day proclamation on the wall in this incredible home or set of homes for veterans in the community. And so I'd like to ask uh, my colleagues to join me. This is a Flag Day proclamation uh, from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts by His Excellency Governor Deval L. Patrick. We, the North Andover Board of Selectmen, do hereby, hereby proclaim, and the clerk shall duly record, that the new Veterans Family Housing at 138 High Street be hereafter named Freedom House. So proclaimed by the North Andover Board of Selectmen this 27th day, September 2014, signed Richard Valancourt, Select Chairman. The, the purpose of the house is not for somebody to move in and permanently stay here. Mm -hmm. It's for, uh, we're looking for people with upward mobility. Maybe some people would have uh, had some financial difficulty mm -hmm. you know, recently, maybe they've lost their job. Um, you know, they've had trouble making mortgage payments or rental payments. Sure, sure. And they, they want to get some more stability in their life, mm -hmm. and this would be a transitional uh, situation. So maybe after two, three, four, five years, they would move out, maybe uh, um, they would be financially stable enough to buy their own home, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's sort of the purpose of this facility here. Our intentions are the families that come in mm -hmm. uh, will agree to work with a financial advisor at mm -hmm. the Veterans Outreach Center and in, in respects that we're going to try to arrange it so that they can spend down their debt, mm -hmm. start saving and put money away so that at five or six year period they'll be able to take that money purchase of a uh, home using the VA loan system. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much this project costs in total? Uh, it's, it'll be about a half a million dollars by the time we get done. It could be more, mm -hmm. uh, but we saved a lot of money because there was a lot of volunteer work. I think it, it's just a, a great program. You know? mm -hmm. Thanks so much to Tim McCarthy of the North Andover Citizen for help on that coverage. You can check out the entire dedication ceremony with more of these follow-up interviews by Tim all this month on GovCam. And now it's time for our GovCam update. First, we have some exciting updates from Andrew Mailer in our town manager's report. For this month's episode of the journal, I want to give you an update of a few projects going on around town and uh, keep it to speed on those items if you haven't had uh, that opportunity. 
First of all, you may have seen the work if you drive down Sutton Street uh, on McAvoy Field. Uh, it's a $1.2 million renovation and upgrade to that uh, particular facility. It'll be great for families and, and for sports teams. Uh, that work should be completed in the next two to three weeks, so I encourage everybody to stop by and take a look. Uh, there'll be new play structures and softball fields and a walking sort of track for, for folks who want to visit that facility and some additional parking. So I'm very excited about uh, that new open space opportunity that was supported uh, by the Community Preservation Committee and the Community Preservation Act funds. Which, which really do come from your tax dollars. Uh, additionally, we're in the process of completing the bid for the new fire station. It's been permitted. That'll be located on uh, Chickering Road at the corner of Prescott. Uh, you should see that start coming from the ground as early as uh, late this fall, early in the winter, and the expect, expected uh, uh, date for completion of that project is late in 2015. Uh, the hope from that project, or the goal, is to go back into next town meeting and ask for funding to use the former fire station here on Main Street that's attached to Town Hall and expand into that building with an additional Town Hall spaces. That'll allow us to move the Health Department and the Building Department and Community Development from their current Osgood Landing site, um, which they're expected to pay rent at the beginning next year, uh, next door here to Town Hall. So we have a centralized Town Hall for the first time in many years, a place where um, residents can do their business and hopefully attract an, uh, additional activity here on Main Street. Uh, speaking about Main Street, you may be aware of the fact that the Brad Street School, uh, there was a, a, an award by the Board of Selectmen to bring in a contractor to do work of the Brad Street School, uh, demolish it and build new structures, commercial and residential. That's currently going through the permitting phase. I would expect uh, that it'll complete the planning board process and ultimately be permitted later this year. And you'll see the demolition of the Brad Street School and the redevelopment of that site into both commercial, retail, and residential use over the next 18 months or so. A pretty exciting project that, again, we hope adds some, um, some pop to downtown in terms of bringing a biz new business activity here um, in our Main Street district. Um, two other items, so the Kittred School Gymnasium project, which was part of the facility master plan, is complete and has been in active use by the school uh, since they opened a couple of weeks ago. And the school central administration building, which is being uh, constructed at the former uh, police station site at the corner of Osgood and Main Street, um, should be completed by next April and be occupied by the school administration building. Again, they're currently located at Osgood Landing, and it puts them in a site that's closer to the school buildings in a facility that's more appropriate for the use. Finally, on a, on a completely different vein, I wanted to let you know that uh, two years ago, town meeting approved legislation which would allow residents to make a donation to a fund which could be used um, as a pool of money uh, for folks who are elderly or disabled to apply for some tax relief. Uh, that fund has now accumulated more than $20,000 from the generosity of residents here in North Andover. And the Board of Selectmen has authorized the formation of a committee who will put together rules and regulations and a process by which um, elderly folks and disabled folks can apply for tax abatements. So look forward to more of that. We'll either place it in the Senior Center newsletter or communicate in some additional way. But I'm excited about the prospect of providing some additional tax relief for seniors and for disabled, and also very um, heartfelt uh, appreciation for the residents who have chose to donate to that fund. That's it for this month in the Journal. I look forward to talking to you next month. 2014 is a midterm election year. The state of Massachusetts will be voting for a senator and a new governor, as well as four ballot initiatives. These include eliminating the connection between the gas tax and consumer price index, an expansion of the bottle recycling program, expanding earned sick pay to part-time workers, and repealing the controversial casino bill passed in 2012. Here in North Andover, we'll be voting for our state rep of the 14th Essex District. Here's some special info for voters from town clerk, Joyce Bradshaw. I'm here today to give you some important information about the upcoming state election on November 4th, 2014. You may have already received in the mail what we call the Red Book, which comes from the Secretary of State's office. It is an excellent resource both to give you information about the, the uh, ballot questions, also to give you information how you check your voter registration status, and there's also a voter registration form included in there should you not be a registered voter information where you can get additional forms, how you get an absentee ballot, and where you can find information about of what candidates will appear on the ballot. It's a very important election because the turnout is usually great. We have first-time voters with students who have turned 18 and maybe away at school. 
Again, we request that you look for an absentee ballot request early so that we have time to process the ballots and get them to you. Ballots in Massachusetts which are absentee do count on Election Day. We do get that question. Very easy process. You can either fill out a form and send it to us, and also you can just give us a call and we're happy to send it out to you. If you're unable to get to the polls on Election Day uh, for any reason, if there's a, it, it, you, may, you may call us and we're happy to give you the information and assist you. There's also a new government portal that allows you to check your voter registration status. Put your name, uh, your name and your date of birth in there. It tells you if you're registered to vote, where you're registered to vote, or if you're active or inactive. Should you show up as an inactive voter, it's a very easy process for us to activate you. The reason you might be inactive is that you have not received a census or you might not have responded to a census. We are here to help you in any way we can. Our office is at 120 Main Street. You can also come by once the ballots are here and vote absentee. Deadline for absentee voting is noon the day before the election, which is November 3rd. Uh, we urge you to be aware of the voter registration deadline, which is October 15th. Wednesday and all town and city clerk's offices are open till 8 o'clock so you might have a, an office that's closer to where you work. You can actually go in there and register whether it's for North End or for any other city or town. Remember we're a website away at www.townofnorthandover.com. You can send an email directly to me and I'm always happy to get those at jbradshaw at townofnorthandover.com or just pick up the phone and call us at 978-688-9501. We're happy to provide any assistance assistance we can. Again, remember your vote is very important to us and we're here to help and thank you very much. Once again, don't forget to vote on Tuesday, November 4th and be sure to pick up your Red Book if you haven't gotten one already. They are available at Town Hall and in Spanish as well as large print. And yes, you can take the book in with you to the voting booth. But before we move on, we do have one special announcement from the Board of Selectmen. This year, Halloween trick-or-treating will actually be on Halloween. Okay. So should we announce that as Halloween will be held on Halloween this Halloween's year? Halloween's on Halloween! And 5.30... By order of the selection. By order of the selection. 5.30 to 7... So motor be. 5.30 to 7.30, which is the, a little bit different than what was in the original. Yes, trick-or-treating will be from 5.30 to 7.30 on Halloween night, Friday, October 31st. Get your costumes ready, and the snow date is Saturday, November 1st. Now we check in with the North Andover Citizen for some of the top headlines in the last few weeks. Women Democrats representing North Andover won big in the primary elections held on September 9th. A total of 3,548 ballots were cast on that Tuesday, and about 19% of the town's 18,300 registered voters. The 14th Essex state rep incumbent Deanna Desaglio of Methuen maintained her seat against two challengers from North Andover, Phil DeCollegero and Oscar Camargo. Desaglio won the district with 1,970 votes to DeCollegero's 1,247 and Camargo's 460. She will face uncontested Republican Rosemary Smedili of the North Andover Board of Selectmen in the general election on November 4th. Incumbent of the 1st Essex District, State Senator Kathleen O'Connor Ives of Newburyport also maintained the Democratic nomination against challenger Jessica Finicaro of Methuen. Ives won with a total of 9,034 votes to Finicaro's 4,000, 223 across the district. Ives will face the again uncontested Republican nominee Sean Tuey of Haverhill. Thanks for the support of more than 150 backers, the ACT Theatre Company's Kickstarter campaign to renovate their new theatre successfully reached its goal of $22,000 days in advance of the August 20th deadline. The fund will ensure ACT will be able to open their new theatre to the public just in time for their production of Mel Brooks' comedy musical Young Frankenstein in late October. The Kickstarter money will be used for the installation of two handicapped bathrooms at the Osgood Landing Theater, allowing the company to open their doors to the public without the need for a special permit. The act company expects it will need to raise an additional $80,000 to renovate their space fully, which will include a 200-seat community theater and two classrooms for actor development. 
North Andover High School students rallied around the concert choir late last month holding an outdoor coffeehouse style concert on the town common before the start of the school year. The outdoor event was a fundraiser to help the concert choir perform at Carnegie Hall next year. Many groups of students performed known favorites and the occasional original song. Other exciting news from the high school, Eagle Scout Daniel Marino of Troop 87 earned his wings last month through his service project at North Andover High School. Marino, with the assistance of numerous local businesses and fellow Eagle Scouts, constructed a, constructed, excuse me, a concrete staircase at the high school track. The stairwell is located on the grassy knoll connecting the track to the path into the school's north parking lot. Marino said students climb the knoll to access the track quicker, which created a safety hazard and muddy conditions. His steps will alleviate this problem. Marino recently graduated from North Andover High School and will be attending the University of New Hampshire this fall. One North Andover Marine kept fighting until the very end. After an almost seven-year struggle with breast cancer, Pedo Devro of 52 passed away in his home on August 21st. First diagnosed with breast cancer in 2008, Devereaux quickly became an advocate for breast cancer treatment and research. He was known locally and nationally as a speaker on male breast cancer and for spreading the story of other Marines and their families suffering from exposure to contaminated water, which was discovered at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. The toxins discovered in the late 1980s were hundreds to thousands of times higher in concentration than federal safety standards allow. Our thoughts are with all of his family and friends here in North Andover and Haverhill. Superintendent Dr. Kevin Hutchinson announced to the school committee last month that he plans to retire at the conclusion of this school year. The school committee has formed a subcommittee to assist in finding candidates for the district's next year. Ads seeking a qualified candidate have been placed on educator job boards and in professional publications nationwide. The committee expects to vote on a new school leader this coming winter. The school committee and board of selectmen voted unanimously in a joint session to appoint David Teresi to fill a vacancy on the school committee for the next seven months. The two boards selected Teresi from a pool of eight candidates after almost an hour and a half of deliberations, mostly on points and procedures. The vacancy on the school committee emerged following the resignation of attorney Lori Burslaff in August. Burslaff resigned after accepting a job as executive assistant for the town manager's office. Teresi, also an attorney, was a state representative for the 14th Essex District for seven terms and a North Andover selectman for one term from 1996 to 1999. He lost the Democratic primary election in 2012 to Representative Deanna DiZaglio. His appointment will last until the next town elections in the spring, which typically take place in March. Teresi must run as a candidate in the election in order to continue serving on the board. Finally, the North Andover Middle School held a week-long field trip to Stevens Pond earlier this month to teach students the basic skills of kayaking. Directing and supervising the field trip was 8th grade physical education teachers Mary Beth Lawler Chesler and Kyle Wood. Chesler said Stevens Pond is one of the most overlooked resources in the town for outdoor activity and fun. She said, quote, it's our town symbol. It should have some meaning behind it. I want them to enjoy it and make it part of their lives." End quote. Once again, we'd like to thank Tim over at the North Andover Citizen for submitting these stories to us here at the Journal. Now let's check out this month's calendar. In store for the month is, of course, the long-awaited trick-or-treating celebration that is Halloween. On top of that, October is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month and National Pizza Month. Be sure to enjoy plenty of good pizza while making all those Halloween preparations. The North Andover Athletic Association is hosting the Knights on the Run 5K on Saturday, October 18th. All proceeds will benefit the NAAA, which is a group dedicated to supporting student athletes at North Andover High School. You can register or get more information at KnightsRun5K.com. The town of North Andover will host a series of flu clinics this month for residents. The clinic for elderly and high-risk residents will be Wednesday, October 15th at the North Andover Senior Center from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. For families and other residents, there will be a clinic in the North Andover Middle School cafeteria on Monday, October 20th from 4 to 7 p.m. Please bring your insurance or Medicare cards to these clinics. Please visit townofnorthandover.com for more information. 
A debate featuring candidates for state rep for the 14th Essex District will take place Thursday, October 23rd in Kaskia Hall at Merrimack College. Republican candidate and North Andover Board of Selectmen member Rosemary Connolly Smedili will face off against incumbent Democrat Diana DeZoglio. For some fall fun, visit Smolak Farms for their Harvest Festival weekends running through October 26th. They have an all-new corn maze, corn cannons, apple slingshots, and other great activities. Do some apple picking and don't forget to try their cider donuts. For more information, go to smolakfarms.com. As we mentioned earlier, Halloween trick-or-treating in North Andover will actually be held on Halloween night. Friday, October 31st from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., everyone can get their candy bags ready and run around their neighborhoods for great Halloween fun. If there happens to be inclement weather, the backup date will be the next night, Saturday, November 1st, during the same time period. Now, national midterm elections are on Tuesday, November 4th. Don't forget to vote for a new governor, a senator, state representatives, and some important ballot questions. Be sure to pick up a red book at Town Hall for all the voter information you'll need. And coming up in early November is the Stevens Memorial Library Fall Book Sale. The sale runs from Friday, November 7th through Sunday, November 9th, and will feature books, DVDs, and CDs to some, at some very excellent prices. For more information, check out stevensmemoriallibrary.org. If you have an event you want to add to our calendar, please send us an email. That's the journal at northandovercam.org. Well, that will wrap it up for all of us here at the Journal today and for our October issue. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Morgan Healy. And I'm Ron Carpenito. Thank you all so much for watching, and happy Halloween.